I hope you enjoyed this moment with us. And if you are our constant viewer, we like to appreciate you and we want to encourage you. Keep visiting, keep coming. We are here for you. If today is your first time um, tuning in, we'd like you to subscribe, to like, and to share this very video that you are watching. I believe very well that there are people in your contact that would like to hear this message. What is being talked about today. The blessing that you have had today, I hope there are people in your life that you want to share with and I'd like you to do that one. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Hope we're all doing well. And it's a privilege and a blessing to see each and every one of you here and those watching online. I want to say thank you for coming. And if this is your first time here, my name is Elizabeth. Sometimes it can be a bit awkward when you go somewhere, you don't know the person speaking, so you're wondering. So hence why I'm introducing myself. Amen. Before we go into the word today that will be brought forth, um, we'd like to take this moment to greatly appreciate the leadership of Cross Purpose Church for their con constant support. And we also want to honor our senior pastor who is not here right now, um, Pastor Joseph Wisdom Sisse, for the privilege and the trust that he has so much in us young people in this ministry. May God richly bless our leadership, amen. And we also want to say thank you to our members. Without you, there will be no word for us to, to preach. Without you, there will be, you no, know, God will not give us the inspiration to stand here and preach to you. So we also want to say thank you and may God continue to uphold each and every one of you in Jesus' name. For today's sermon is titled, My Past, My Testimony. My past, my testimony. Turn to someone and tell them, my past, my testimony. My past, my testimony. You know, most often when we think about our past, we sometimes have negative overview of our past. We think negative things, you know, maybe because of whatever circumstances, different factors, you know, contribute in the way that we view our past in a negative way. Life factors that may contribute to the way we view our past can either be internal, external, or a combination of both. So to better understand what I mean by internal, external, and combination of both. So internal factors are decisions and choices that you make solely on yourself. So without involving other people or without involving um, anything else, they're decisions you make by yourself. And external factors, on the other hand, includes other people. Your environment, maybe the way you were brought up, is the reason why sometimes when you think about your past, you have a negative perception. Maybe in the society in which you were brought up, when you think about it, it brings negative you know, um, perception. I want us to read our key scripture for today, which is in the book of First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 12 to 16. First Timothy chapter 1 verses 12 to 16. I'll be reading NIV which says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord has, was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that we are, that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save the sinners of whom I am, I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who will believe in him and receive eternal life. Hallelujah. We see here Apostle Paul's gratitude towards God for God's mercy towards him. So if Apostle Paul can be so grateful that God has shown him mercy, what more of you and I? What more of us? There is no sin that is so grievous that God cannot forgive. There is no past that the mercy of God cannot override. It doesn't matter how, how ugly the past may look. It doesn't matter how, what you have been through. 
there is no pass that God cannot override. And Apostle Paul was a persecutor of Christians and he called himself the worst of sinners. But this is the key part. Yet God used him to show forth his glory, his love, and his mercy. Somebody who was a persecutor of Christians, who considered himself the worst of sinners, God used him to show that he is a sovereign God, that there is no mess that he cannot turn around. And that is the God that we serve in the name of Jesus. You may be seated here today or watching online. Maybe you are living in regret. Maybe you are reliving in the past, harboring shame and guilt. Today's sermon, by the grace of God, we pray and we believe and we hope that it will bring freedom to your soul from every condemnation and from every bondage in the name of Jesus. If there is anything you're going to remember from, from today's sermon as the sermon of God comes forth, remember this, your past does not define you. It is your testament of God's mercy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, we thank you. For we know that there is nothing too hard for you. With you, there is nothing impossible. Lord, even as your daughter just shared, our past are a testament of your mercy and of your faithfulness. And before we go deeper into the message, you know, I want us to, well, not a game, but I just want to ask you a few questions just to, you know, get every one of us on the same page. Um, what comes to your mind when you hear the word wealth or money? Media team, let's work together. I send the PowerPoint. When you hear the word wealth or money, what comes to your mind? To some people, maybe it is a holiday with a family, you know, a trip. It can be solo, it can be, you know, with a family. To some people, maybe they thought about a luxurious house, you know, that they want to have. And maybe to someone else, you know, that love, maybe they want this fancy car. What goes to your mind or through your mind when you hear the word wealth or money? Maybe let's try something else. When you hear the word or you see a cow, a cow, what comes to your mind? To some people, it's milk. They already said it. What else? Meat, of course. To some people, maybe it's shoes. Like the leather shoes, leather shoes are made for some that are wearing. And to some people, maybe it's lunch. Maybe it's lunch. But now, how about when you hear about your past? Maybe your past life or as you call it, your past lifestyle, what comes to mind? To some people, they don't want to talk about it. It is a no-go zone. I don't want to talk about it. Don't even mention it. You know, other people, to them, it creates a picture of pain, of guilt, of shame, of rejection, of abandonment. But this morning, I want to let you know, the fact of the matter is that each and every one of us, you know, we carry stories that are shaped by our past, our experiences, our choices, and also by the grace of God. Your past and my past are not just, you know, a combination or collection of events that have happened, but they serve as a foundation for your faith, for my faith, and also they lay the foundation demonstrating the power of God's transformation, the power of God's mercy, the power of God's love in our lives. What picture does your past paint on your mind? This morning, I want us to go, you know, by the grace of God, for us to explore some of the ways that we can turn our past into testimonies. Or how we can allow God to use our past, you know, and turn them into powerful testimonies like we saw in the life of Apostle Paul. Like we saw in the life of Apostle Paul. The first step that we can take is by us first acknowledging our past. Look at your neighbor, tell them, acknowledge your past. Acknowledging our past. You know, we are all products of our histories. You know, some people come from background where there was harmony, where there was peace, where there was joy, you know, in their home, maybe in the environment that they grew up in. But for some people, their backgrounds are full of scars, of pain, maybe shame, 
maybe regret. You know, they are weighed down by their guilt. And these are all things that contribute, you know, to what we are. But the Apostle Paul here, he did not shy away from his past. He did not try to pretend. He did not try to deny. He did not hide his past away, but instead he exposed it. He revealed his past. He said, I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor of believers. I was a violent man. He did not shy away from his past. And that comes to show us a lesson as believers. We should not hide our past away. As dark as it may look like. In fact, Apostle Paul, he made it into a habit. He turned it into a lifestyle that whenever he had an opportunity to speak to someone, whenever he had an opportunity you know, to, to speak either to a believer, to a non-believer, before kings or before whosoever he find himself, he started sharing. Whatever he has to say, he always made reference to his past. He always made reference to his past. And the other day, Apostle Paul, he was speaking to King Agrippa. He said this in the book of Act 26. I want us to read this passage. Act 26, let's read verses 4. Act 26, 4. He said, the Jewish people all know the way I have lived ever since I was a child. From the beginning of my life, my, in my own country and in Jerusalem. This is Apostle Paul. He is standing before a great king. And he's talking, he wants to share about the love of God, but he started with his past. He said, all of you, you are aware, like many of us seated down here, we can say, you know me, you saw me growing up. You know how I have lived my life. You have seen me. And he went on to say in verse 9, I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus Christ. And that, and that is just what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priest, I put my, many of the lost people in prison. And when, they were put, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Many times I went from the synagogue, from one synagogue to another, to have them punished. I tried to force them to blaspheme. I was obsessed with persecuting them. And I even hunted them from one city to another. So this is the Apostle Paul. He is telling you or he's sharing his testimony or his past life before a king. But the part that I love is in verse 12. Verse 12 he says, But on one of these occasions or journeys, but one of these occasions I was going down to Damascus under the authority. But on one of these occasions I was heading down you know, to Damascus. I was going to do the same thing to persecute. But something happened. I encountered Jesus Christ. I encountered the Son of God. You know, maybe you may be sitting down here this morning and you say, I used to do this. You know, maybe I used to be a drunkard. You know, I used to go partying and, and drink and, you know, disgrace myself. But you can say, but on one of these occasions, I encountered Jesus Christ. On one of these occasions, I met the King of Glory. On one of these occasions, I experienced the loving touch of Jesus Christ like Apostle Paul. He said, I used to persecute Christians. But on one of these journeys to Damascus, I encounter Jesus. Your journey may not be to Damascus, but maybe you used to go clubbing every night, every time you have an opportunity. And that may be your past, and you are sitting, maybe sometimes you feel guilty, you don't want to talk about it. But you can stand and say, like Apostle Paul, I used to go to clubbing every Saturday, I used to go to clubbing every day, but until one occasion, until one occasion, until one occasion someone told me about Jesus Christ. Until one occasion I decided to surrender your life or my life to Jesus. I don't know what your journey is, but you can be like Apostle Paul. That I'm not going to allow my past to hold me down. I'm not going to allow my past to tie me, to hold me hostage. You know, to live in shame, in pain and guilt. But I can use it, allowing God to use this as a testimony of his mercy and on his faithfulness. It is very important for us to acknowledge our past because that's a beginning for healing and transformation. It is a beginning of healing and transformation in our lives. You know, we saw how Apostle Paul, a great servant of God, this is after he has been saved. He had every reason what God was doing in his life not to talk about his past. But he said, I'm not going to shy away from my past, but I can use it. I can use this as a testimony. To show how God has been faithful. To show how God has been faithful. 
You know, the Bible says that in all things, God worked together for the good of those that love him and those that are called according to his purpose. Listen, your past, my past, even though it is full, you know, of trials, it is full of pain, shame, and tribulations, God can still use it for his glory. God can still use it, you know, to, to show his love and mercy to other people around us if only we can allow God to use us, to use our past for his glory. This morning, the first step that you need to take is acknowledging your past. Don't try to cover up. I understand it can be painful. No one would just want to stand and share about their past. No one want to see somewhere and just begin to open up about your past. But most especially when it comes to witnessing, your past is a weapon that you can use to the glory of God. But for your own personal healing, don't hide it. Acknowledge it. Say, I've had a rough past. I have had a rough childhood in the past. I experienced awful things in my childhood. But today, all those things, God can turn them around. The pain, God can turn them around the wounds for his glory. If only you allow God to do that. And Paul did not just acknowledge his past, but he also spoke about the mercy that he received from God. How many of you have received mercy from God in this place? How many of us have been shown mercy by God? God is a merciful God. And that's what Apostle Paul said. I was shown mercy. I was shown mercy. I acted in ignorance and unbelief. You know, this is a crucial point in our lives. When we are talking about our past, we are not boasting. We are not proud of the past. But we are showing that God has shown us mercy. God has shown me mercy. Maybe I used to be, you know, I used to steal. But now God has shown me mercy. I'm not proud of it. But I can acknowledge that God has taken me from afar. Maybe I'm someone that used to gossip. I'm not a proud of it. But I can acknowledge that God has taken me from afar. It is good for us to acknowledge our past. Because that's the beginning for healing for ourselves. For transformation. And also for God to use it as a testimony for his mercies upon our lives. In our moment of weakness and ignorance. We should always know that the mercy of God... And the grace of God is a light that guides us, you know, back to him. God is a loving God. Regardless of how far you think you have gone, his arms are always open. His arms are always open. Tell your neighbor, acknowledge your past. Acknowledge your past. We should not hide away from it. And the second thing I want us to look at is that we must be transformed through the grace of God. We must be transformed through the grace of God. You know, Apostle Paul's encounter with Jesus Christ changed everything about him. When he encountered Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, everything about him changed. And that's how he started his transformation journey. It is very important as believers for us to seek transformation through the grace of God. Through the grace of God. And Apostle Paul emphasized how the grace of God was poured upon him. And he summarizes when you read First Timothy chapter, the passage we read, First Timothy 1 from 12, but we look at 15. Let's look at 15. That's where the Apostle Paul, he summarized the gospel. He said, this is a trustworthy saying that everyone should accept Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And I'm the worst of them all. This is a very powerful statement because in this statement, Apostle Paul, he summarizes the gospel. He said, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And he did not point fingers. He did not say, you are a sinner. You are a sinner. You have done worse things. He started by himself. He said, of them all, I am the worst. Jesus Christ, he came to the world to save sinners. So that simply means no one here or maybe watching online, no one is outside the grace of God. It doesn't matter how dark your past is, the grace of God can reach you. It doesn't matter how, uh, how dark your past is, the mercy of God can reach you. The mercy of God can reach you. You know, sometimes our past can be filled with mistakes, a lot of them, with failures, with everything. But God can use all of those and bring transformation in our lives. God is a faithful God. He's a faithful God. And sometimes the devil is very tricky. You know, when you are going through this transformation, he comes and begins to remind you of your past. I don't know if you have been there, but I have been there so many times. 
When you decide to follow Jesus Christ, he comes, he tells you, you have not been forgiven. <laughs> you think God has really forgiven you? Who do you think you are? You are going, you know, to stand in front of people, maybe to sing, maybe to preach. Remember what you did yesterday. Remember what you did two years ago. Remember what you did five years ago. But remember that the grace of God is more than enough. You know, when the devil comes to you, and that's what the apostle Paul said, he said, I have been crucified with Jesus Christ. I have been crucified with Jesus Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ live in me. And the life that I now live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me so much and he gave himself up for me. And you can stand whenever the devil comes to remind you about your past. He said, I've been crucified with Jesus Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Jesus Christ lives in me. He will come, but you must know that you have been redeemed. How many of us know that your testimony, your, your past is a testimony of God's mercy? How many of you believe that your past is a testimony of God's love? And this morning, or whenever you face that challenge, the enemy will come. He said, enemy, I know you have come to remind me of, of my past, but Jesus Christ has set me free. He has redeemed me. He has wiped away my tears. He has forgiven me. This is very important because he's going to come. The enemy is going to come. And that's why you're talking about it. It's very important because whatever you try to hide, that's when he will come. He put fear in you that, you know, when you go and stand here, your secret will come out. But when you present it before God, Jesus Christ, he never remembers. He said, as far as the east is from the west, so have I removed your sin and your guilt away from you. How good is our God? This morning, I want to encourage you. When the enemy comes to you, remind him that I have been forgiven. I have been shown mercy. It is no longer I that live, but Jesus Christ lives in me. And the life that I'm living in this body, though I made mistakes in the past, but now I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me so much. And he has given his life for me. Don't allow your past to hold you. I have seen people where I have been there myself. And this morning, I'm not just preaching a message to a church. I'm preaching also to myself. You know, sometimes these are messages we share away from. But when God said, you go talk about it, it's not much about the people, but it's also about you. Where we, 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 we try to hide and we try to keep it away. And we put ourselves in this prison of our past and the devil come to torment us. He bring images of our past. He brings the memories of our past to us. But today you can say, devil, I'm not going to allow you to do that. I have been set free. I have been transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I have been transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I have been transformed. And the last thing I want to talk about is for us to share our testimony. Sharing your testimony is very, very powerful. You know, Paul, he shared his testimony. He began to share, you know, begin to talk to other people. And then the king even paid attention. This was a king that was not interested, but as Paul started sharing his testimony, he paid close attention. And let me tell you, your testimony, my testimony, can bring people to Christ. Your testimony can empower someone. Your testimony can strengthen someone's faith. And this morning, I want to encourage you. Learn to share your testimony. You know, I, I read a book. I tried to look for the author, but there is a statement that he made. He said, only broken people can break people. And what he was saying, he said, only those people that have experienced brokenness that will be able to help those that are going through brokenness. Only people that have gone through life challenges can, can, are able to help other people that are currently going through life challenges. You know, sometimes we see... You know, the, one of the reasons why I am so close and passionate about helping and working with young people, because I know, I know I have been there. And that's why when they come to me, most of the time, you know, they can testify. I don't tell them anything. I just say, I understand. I know because I have been there. I know I have been there. How the shame, how the pain, the guilt. I know exactly what it means, you know, to be struggling, you know, with addiction, pornographic addiction. I know the shame, the guilt, 
and a young person come to you and they tell you, I'm going through this challenge. I'm experiencing addiction and I'm, I'm not going to send them away. I'm not going to judge them. I'm not going to you know, try to condemn them because I know how I've been there. I know how God showed me mercy. I know how God delivered me from it. I know exactly what it means to go through the pain, to go through the shame. You know you don't want to do it. You know I don't want to do it, but I keep going back. I know. And so that when they come, I, I don't just say, you know what? You pray, you do this, you do that. I sit them down, I say, let me listen to you. Let me hear the struggles that you are going through. Let me hear the pain that you are going through. And at the end, I tell them, you know what? I don't want you to go and pray. I'm here, I'm gonna work with you. I'm gonna share my experiences. I'm gonna share my testimony of how God is able to set you free, of how God is able to deliver you. Maybe you are here, someone that have been in the situation. I don't know what it is, but God has given you a testimony. God has given each and every one of us a testimony. We may try to cover them up. We may try to pretend. But God has given each and every one of us a testimony. Your experience is a testimony. Your experience is a testimony. You know, this morning I was sharing with the baptismal class. I said after this baptismal um, ceremony on Saturday, because it happened to me, I said you may meet someone and after your baptism, maybe a day, a two, two days, Maybe a month, and then you will do something, and they will tell you, You just got baptized, you are not supposed to do that. And I tell them, Transformation is a process. For the fact that you just got baptized today doesn't mean everything will be okay. That you are not going to make mistakes anymore. That you are not going to you know, go wrong anymore. But I tell you, the most important thing is that when you make the mistake, learn from it. Because sometimes it is not God that we are, God will allow the mistake. God will not send the mistake. But whatever happened, God use it for our good. Maybe you are broken right now and you are going through this brokenness and you are praying, God, why can't you heal me? It's not that God is not able to heal you. But maybe God is allowing the brokenness for a season in your life. Maybe for a month, for two months, maybe for one year. Because there is something that God is preparing in you. So that tomorrow, when he heals you of that brokenness, when someone has come with brokenness, you are not going to judge them. You are not going to judge them, but you can share your testimony of how you were broken and God heal you. Maybe today you are going through shame and guilt. And you know how awful it feels to feel guilty, to feel ashamed. You don't even want to come into public because of what's happening around you. Or what people are saying about you in the community. And you're saying, God, when is this coming to an end? I want to encourage you this morning. Don't worry about when it will come to an end. But worry about what God is teaching you in that moment. Worry about what God is teaching you in that moment. So that tomorrow, because you know that five people will come around a big girl. And say, Abigail, I'm going through shame. I'm going through guilt. I'm going through pain. But because five months ago, she has gone through the pain of guilt. Of pain and she can stand by you know the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and also through her experiences be able to share her struggles and lead people to God it may be something different for you maybe today you are facing a battle with your children you know you are doing everything that you can do as a parent you know as a single mom and things are not working and you keep asking God when God why God when, God why. I'm not here to tell you that it is God that's allowing it. But what I can tell you is that God is teaching you something. So that tomorrow when God intervenes in the life of your children, when you see other people's children, you will not judge them. You know how when everything is going well in your home, your children are doing well, and you see other people's children going astray, you begin to you know, point fingers. You begin to call them all kind of names. And sometimes God will allow the same thing to happen to you. So that when you see other people's children, you will not talk about them. You will go on your knees and begin to pray for them. You will not talk about them. You will go on your knees and begin to pray for the parent. What is your story that you are keeping away? What is your story that you are trying to hide? What is your past that you are trying to shy away? Why can't you allow your past to be used by God as a testament of his glory, of his mercy? Why can't you allow God to use your past as a testament? For his glory. There are many things. Many things. We have seen people that live in the past. 
in the past and I know as I said the pain and everything that comes with it and everything that comes with it but my prayer for you this morning that you will allow God to use your testimony that you will allow God to use your pain as a testimony of his love of his mercy of his goodness of his kindness and this morning maybe you are in this place even as we reflect on this you know short message that I just shared about your past your testimony maybe there's something that you know just came to your mind maybe there's a picture that just you know been painted on your mind and you don't want to talk about it because it is so painful you want to shy away from it but this morning we are before the king of glory he's able to wipe away every tear he's able to help you instead of you seeing that that pass as a pain you begin to see it as a testimony instead of you begin to think about that past and be worried and be depressed and be frustrated you can see it as a testimony to empower someone to encourage someone why can't we rise up on our feet this morning you know we're going to do the prayer for salvation maybe there's someone here or watching online you know you have not come to that place that you have given your life to Jesus but this morning there's an opportunity for you to do that there's an opportunity for you to do that and if you're in this place why our eyes are closed just give me a wave and we're going to pray with you this morning Maybe you have not given your life to Jesus Christ and we are not talking about you being born in a Christian home or you having been going to church for the past years or have you decided in your heart to make him Lord over your life. If you are in this place this morning, if you have not done that, I want you to give me a wave and we're going to pray together and we're going to pray with you. Maybe there's someone online. I want us to repeat this all together. Maybe there's someone watching online or maybe someone here so that we can be a source of encouragement to them. Please repeat up after me. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe in Jesus Christ as your son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you rose, uh, raised him back to life. I want to trust him with all my life as my Lord and my Savior and to follow him for the rest of my life. Guide me and help me in Jesus' name. This moment, I want to call or make a two-altar call. One, I want us to pray. Maybe you are in this place. You have been tormented by your past. Whenever you think about it, just pictures of pain and shame and guilt and tears and you have tried to let it go you have tried to pay you know no attention to it you know how you try I don't want to think about it but it keep coming I don't want to talk about it but it keep coming maybe God is trying to tell you acknowledge it and deal with it and this morning I want you to come at the altar we're going to lay our hands on you and we're going to pray with you that God through the blood of Jesus Christ we heal you of every past of every pain of every shame of every guilt and this morning I specifically want us to pray I don't know whether this is the right thing to do but you know God has been impressing on my heart to pray for a single parent a single parent a single parent in this place that are going through pain maybe because of their children that God will be the source of their strength that God will be the source of their strength. And I know what I'm talking about because I know I've seen my mom. I've seen my mom. When I used to live with her, she would go in the room and, you know, praying for each and every one of us. And every parent have dreams and aspirations for their children. And you see those children going astray. You see those children, you know, doing something that bring pain, it brings shame, it brings guilt to you. But this morning, I want us to pray. If any other parent is here that, you know, maybe you have your children that are going through a moment and you want to pray for them, you can come as well. But I want us to pray for single parent 
that are having challenges with their children and they are seeking for help and they are calling on God, God, only you that can help me. They are calling on the name of the Lord, say, Jesus Christ, only you that can help me. And this morning you can come before the throne of mercy. You can come and stand in the gap of your home, of your children, of your own life. The altar is open. You know what you're going through. Maybe you are here for something different. Maybe you need a healing. You can come as well. We're going to pray with you. You're going to pray. We're going to pray with you this moment. If you are here, just come. Don't waste time. We don't have much time. Elders, deacons, please come. Anoint the people of God and pray with them. If you are here this morning, dealing with your past, your past is not allowing you to sleep. The guilt. Maybe you are here praying for your children, for their salvation, for transformation. That God will intervene in their lives. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of the living God. We come before you, God, in the name of Jesus. We come before you for healing this morning. On behalf of our brothers and sisters. And the rebels that are just begin to pray for God's people. Begin to pray, intercede on their behalf. I love the Holy Spirit to do what only Him can do. Holy Spirit, we come before you. Lord, with our pain, with our shame and guilt. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. I just want you to remain standing where you are and just raise your hands. I can feel the power of the Holy Spirit in this place. Wherever you are standing, just raise your hands unto God and allow the Holy Spirit to breathe afresh, to move in that situation, to intervene in that life. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are the one that meant brokenness. 
Lord, you are the one that heal pain. Lord, you are the one that erase. Lapaka say, Brian Talaba, don't hold back, don't hold back. Just allow the Holy Spirit. I can sense the power of God sweeping across this place. Holy Spirit, you are the one that erased. Lake, I say, Mande Rebo Suntalaba. Lipaka saw Brian Talaba and the Rebo Suntalaba. Le, Manda Rabbi and Telekasi, Brian Telebo Holy Ghost. You are the one that erased memories of God, love, abuse of God, labor, cassé, mother of rejection, Lord, abandonment of God, Holy Ghost, erase. Visit your children this moment. Love, visit your children this moment. Breathe afresh, O God. Lord, those that are standing for their children, love for their husband, for their wives, O God, intervene. Intervene. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, can you feel the sweet embrace of the Holy Spirit? Can you feel the sweet embrace of the Holy Spirit? He's saying to you, daughter, son, I'm right here with you. Daughter, son, I'm right here with you. You are not alone on this journey. I'm right here with you. Holy Spirit, Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the glory, God. Oh, heal. Oh, heal. Heal, oh God. Heal the pain. We honor you, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we bless you, God. Why can't we put our hands together for, for the King of Glory? He's God all by himself. Is God all by himself. Beside him there is no other God. After him, no one will ever be. We thank you for your word. Let the healing be permanent. Let the restoration be permanent. Let the intervention of God be permanent. Lord, bring peace, joy in the lives of your children. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lastly, before we go into our announcement or offering, I just want to let us know that that support is available. You know, we are a church. We are not just concerned about the spiritual aspect of everyone. Um, we take a holistic approach. We are also concerned about your well-being. In saying that, I understand that, you know, as we share words of encouragement here, either through preaching, either through um, encounters, sometimes we say things that, you know, that trigger traumas in people that trigger feelings and whatever in people. And that's why I'm saying support is available. We have qualified um, chaplains in this place. I believe Deacon and Susan is one of them. And Stephen is one of them. Um, Pastor William too. So we have chaplains. You can talk to someone. And uh, sometimes it's not for the problem to be solved, but talking to someone is a healing by itself. And if they need further help, you know, they can connect you to people that can help you. So please, make use of the support services. Of course, Pastor Wisdom, he's a, a, a qualified counselor. Uh, my, myself, I'm not yet qualified, but I'm available if you need someone to just have a chat with. So please, please make use of that. We are not just here to tell you, um, to guide you to go to heaven. Of course, we are getting there. But while we are working on this earth, we also need to look after your emotional well-being, your mental well-being, in Jesus' name. Make use of the support, and God bless you. i just like to bless you before I can leave you. I pray that the Lord will honor you. I pray that the Lord will increase you. The Lord will bless you. And I pray that God will give you the grace to accelerate into whatever he is calling you into doing. I pray that the grace and the glory of God we settle upon you this year. I pray that the Lord will give you an advantage over your enemy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree in your life that God himself will go before you. I decree that your going out and your coming in this year shall be blessed. I decree that the Lord will honor you and he will set his glory upon you. I prophesy that God will set a pathway before before you and he will make path straight before you and I speak that any weapon that is formed against you will not prosper 
And I pray that any tongue that rises against you will be judged by God himself. I pray that crooked paths before you will be made straight. The Lord bless you and the Lord enlarge in your territory and increase your coast. May the Lord himself shine his continent upon you. May his face radiate upon you. And may the Lord be gracious to you. Thank you so much for being with us today. I truly honor and I appreciate your time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you another time. God bless you. Bye.